I've been at the top there before coming down. But then I just want to tell my listeners that the devil don't give anything for free. I went to good schools, uh, that use preparatory. From there, I went to Kwabutwe. I am from Kwabutwe. I went to Achimota School. From Achimota College System, I went to the Institute of Journalism. But then, the journalism was not really paying. Uh, yeah, I was working with the BBC. It was not paying like today. Yeah, though it was a satisfactory job. But then, my lifestyle was so big, I wanted to impress. So, I started dealing drugs. My first one that I took was India Hem, and that one was for somebody. And uh, I was a career, I made $4,000. And then my second trip, I made $8,000. I said, look, come on, let me do it by my own. I went about four trips with India Hem, and I realized that we was Your not- Your trip to where? I made a trip to Italy. I made a trip, trip to Switzerland. I made a trip to United States. Yeah, and then after that, I started dealing with cocaine. And with the cocaine, I was a big boy. As of 1982, December, I was controlling $162,000. I'd made best sheet of dollars at the Ringway Hotel, which is now um, a, a bank, opposite Bastor. And I had a lot of hunger, so I don't take taxi because I felt taking a taxi is a humiliation. I changed cars every two months. From Jaguar SJS1, I brought Lincoln Continental. I brought, the only car I've not ever brought down here was a Bentley and then a Rolls Royce. But then um, I was busted in um, 1984, March. And it was one of the biggest catch of cocaine from the continent of Africa. That is 142 tons. Yes, I was busted and then I made a little bit of time because my passport shows that I was younger. But then if you see me with my gray hair, you think I'm 75 or 80. Yes, because after I left jail and then came back, I lost all my friends. As for the women, they when you have deeper pockets and you have a lot of dollars, they call you honey. But when you get broke and you develop holes in your pocket, they make themselves conveniently unavailable. They vanish. The friends vanish. Out of frustration, me myself, I started to use the drug. Believe me, don't ever go there. Don't let anybody deceive you. Heroin and cocaine. Because with cocaine, when you have 100 million now, Within the next four hours, it's going, you're going to get broke, it will get finished. Yes, and with the heroin, once you start taking it, <coughs> excuse me, once you start taking it, within a one month, you get what they call cold turkey. Without it, you can't survive. Your social life, your physical life, you can't even travel. For a long time, I didn't travel, I don't go to Finland because when I go to maybe Kumasi and the Koteki, I don't have some of the stuff or it runs out, I will have Koteki. And what is Koteki? You have so much crumbs, you have romanticism type of things, and it's the only thing that follows you to your dream. Even your dream, when you have Koteki, in your dream it will follow you and they will give you stuff in your dream. It wouldn't work because it's not a real thing. You wake up, the pain is there. You will sell your car worth about $200,000 for $5,000 and you are happy that you got in that money to sustain and support that happy. So I am begging my listeners and that don't ever do the mistake that I did. I have seen women, when we talk about women, I've seen women I can describe as seductive brilliance of the woman with guitar shape, luscious and kissable lips. I have moved about the best women. I've taken women to Switzerland, I don't want to mention names, and I have slept at Grand Sheraton, which I paid $1,500 a day. Taking women to Venice. Venice is a city on water, where you just go with a gondola, the boat, 
yes, with light reflecting on the river. It's what I call a, a, a kaleidoscope, you know, paradise on earth, yes. All because I want to impress the women. By the end of the day, yeah, they are there for you. They will call you names, darling, honey, yes. But then a day when you develop holes, they will call you Pepe because the magic is gone. They were there just because of your pocket, yes. And so I will plead with you, you don't make the mistake I did. Today there are places that I go, they look down at me from my foot where I have won several rows suit. Several rows, they are in England. They make the best suit. Not the kind of suit people wear like carpenters show them. These are suits made by Italian tailors and when they sew one part, they patch it up. Yes, you, you wear it and you see that, yes, you wear a suit, yes. And those days when you put up a shoe, I'm talking about calf leather, Pierre Cardin, yes. We didn't have China where people go and bring that kind of stuff. I wear rollers, day date chronograph, automatic self rewinding people. Yes, I bought for my girlfriend Cartier 18 carats studded with green emeralds. Green emerald is the highest form of dim diamonds, yes. But today when I see the women, they tell me, hey, <laughs> Jeff, is that you? They give me a gift of $50. Pride plays a backseat to desperation. You may say that, well, you have flexed this woman before. You have taken them. I have never flown on Zungo on an aircraft before. Not even Ghana Airways. I go with Switzerland. I go with Panam. And always business class, yes. I fly from um, Britain, that is uh, London, to New York with Concord. I pay $4,700 there yeah, to go from London to uh, New York, which is under normal circumstance. When you go by the DC-10 or the Boeing 747, it will take you about six hours. But then with the Concord, it will take you three and a half hours, yes. But then at the end of the day, oh, you become so humiliated, you want to kill yourself. I've tried killing myself two times. It didn't work. Yes, I drove a car into a tree at a slow down. It never worked. And then the second time I took Valium. And the Valium I took 10 milligrams. I took about 20. But that day I woke up even earlier than I normally get out of bed. I said, well, stop fighting God. And at that time, I saw people go to church like they don't have what it takes. That is why they go and hide in church, because I thought I was too smart. One time I told a guy, you I'll feed you for the rest of your life. You can't compare yourself to me. God forgive me. When I see this guy today, he said, Charlie, take. He give me pittances, yes. And so I'm such an emotional and sentimental person that when people despise me, I feel, I feel so bad. The other day, I went to a church. Somebody invited me. When I walk into the church, what the pastor said, the head pastor who has given himself titles, bishop, international, wah, 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 wah. Who brought this? Who is this man? Some kind of souls you can win. And I just felt so humiliated. I walk out of the church. Yes, but then, yeah, well, life is about what you make it. I wanted to be rich. I became rich, fabulously rich. But then, what use will it make when you are young and you are rich and then getting to your sisters, you look like an AIDS patient or you look like about 75 years, people despising you. No, no, no. It is better that you go through the meal, you struggle through the meal, and then at the end of the day, when you are getting older, yes, then you make it. Because there's a saying that the victor needs to give no explanation, but the majority do not look out for circumstantial details, but for the successful and unsuccessful outcome. Uh, almost without exception, people will pretend like they love you, but it is articulating a minor motive against an inarticulate major motive. They want your pocket. They want to chop you. And when they chop you and the magic is gone, they say bye-bye. And the kind of things they say about you, yeah, <laughs> uh -uh. You, 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 you hear it and it, you just want to take your life. But then, at the end of the day, I thank God that I'm alive. I still get these suicidal tendencies. 
once in a while, but then I really want to impart this free advice to you. If you take it, it's going to help you because the worst thing that can happen to you is not broken heart. It's when you get hooked to drugs. You 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 feel so bad, yes, and you you are hooked, and yes, slave you are a slave to it, and people would be people would despise you. Your family will get humiliated. Somebody go to your friend, sister to buy things in the shop and say, hey, I saw that your brother, the mad person. Come to think of it, do, do, do I sound like a mad person? But this is what drugs and to quit it was not easy. And after quitting it, people will see you that once a thief, always a thief. Once a drug addict, always a drug addict. Yes. So I will appeal that when people are able to kick the habit, society should not neglect them because when you start neglecting people, they say, well, after all, the world is neglecting me, even church is neglecting me. Yes, I'm not calling for sympathy, but it makes you go back and do the things you were doing. You say that, oh, I'm not, I don't care, it's all my relative. Somebody will go and move something from your car. Somebody will break into your car to steal your laptop and money because they are so they have co turkey and they, they, you are desperate and you will do anything to support the happy you don't mind stealing when they catch you they catch you yes that is why in the advanced countries like scandinavia when you are a drug addict you go and register at the drugstore and they give you an artificial heroin methadone where when you take it you get normal not get high but here we don't have that facilities they take you to mental hospital they give you uh, lagati, yes, and when they give you lagati instead of methadone, you become so stiff and you become like us, like Akra people say, bulu bulu. Your nerve becomes so stiff, yes, and before you realize, you get from bad to worse, yes. I really don't want to know. But then, if you have somebody, a relative or a friend going to drugs, or you intend to go to a drug, my friend, you are going to end up to be the most miserable person in the world. I can vote for it because I've been a drug addict for 26 years. 